Good morning. <laughs> Peace. It's all right. Forgive me for startling you, but you might have heard me approaching if you weren't wearing those noisy little things in your ears. Are you well? No, you're not, are you? Have you slept? Sorrow is red all over your face. <laughs> Why are you putting that funny thing over your nose? For protection? Oh, little one, you've nothing to fear from me, I swear it. Please take that off. It's not safe. What if what spreads? Oh, gods. No, I had no idea. As heart of this forest, I cannot leave it or the trees wither. The sylphs whispered to me of closed shops and empty streets, but they could not learn the why of it either. It's been weeks since I found any of you wandering here. I had wondered if there was something terribly wrong with the world outside. It vexes me to hear that it's true. Well, let me put you at ease. You are in no danger of giving me anything, nor I to you. Of course, you don't have to remove your mask if you don't wish to, but there really is no need. And it would cheer me to see your face. Thank you. Walk with me a while. I've only just awakened myself. Winter is dull, deadly dull. It's my habit to sleep through the whole wretched season if I can. Imagine my shock when I woke to find that spring had arrived and there were no mortals in my forest. It felt so wrong. Is it so unusual that I'd want you here? Well, yes, I suppose there are some of us who dislike visitors, but not me. It's nice to meet you too. I'm sorry to hear you've been lonesome. I can't imagine what it must be like to be shut up in one's home while the days turn into weeks. You're not gophers. Even they can still talk to each other. How do you pass the time? Sourdough bread? Is that what I've been smelling? No, I quite enjoy it. It's been an age since I tasted fresh baked bread. Actually, gods, I'm hungry. Would you care to share a meal with me? My home isn't far. <laughs> So you've heard stories about us, have you? Then you should also know we can't tell lies. I promise there's no curse in the food I offer. Nothing you ate would charm you or entrap you. I'm a satyr, not a monster. Oh, no apologies, I'm not offended. If anything, it's refreshing seeing one of you show a little caution. Here, my tree is just this way. I'm not in the habit of inviting mortals to breakfast, no, but you look like you could use a good meal. Usually I'm content to just watch you enjoy yourselves. Humans jogging or walking their dogs, mothers towing their little ones in wagons, foragers looking for mushrooms, shirtless young seminary lads playing that game with the throwing disc and the baskets. <clears throat> oh, I love it when you put on plays. Our hobgoblin would laugh his scrawny ass off if he knew humans depicted him and King Oberon in a midsummer lark. I nearly gave myself away splitting my sides. Oh, bottom, thou art changed. <laughs> Hilarious. Mm. The forest can sense it, you know, when they're near the creatures that love it. It helps them flourish. Occasionally, one of you gets lost. Did you hear tell of a young girl who was rescued some twenty, thirty years or so ago? 
No, I suppose you wouldn't know, would you, little Mayfly? She couldn't have been older than six. I lay in the branches of a tree watching her. It was dark, she was alone, and she was weeping, shrill, piping wails attracting the attention of every hungry creature within hearing. She'd skinned her knee. She was scared and hungry and exhausted. Her pink coat and the bright yellow beads at the end of her braids made her easy to spot. She didn't hear my approach. She stood with her back to me, staring miserably into the forest and keening. I moved closer, expecting her to turn around at any time and see me. It wasn't until I reached out and tugged the hood of her jacket that she noticed me. Oh, she didn't register me as anything unusual. Human children are charming that way. It was nearing the end of autumn and I was ready for my winter's sleep. I was weak and gaunt, with sunken eyes, drying leaves falling from my head, and she still threw her arms around me and bawled into my neck without an ounce of hesitation. <laughs> I let her cry out her hurt. When she quieted, I led her to the base of an elm and held her there until she fell asleep. I was tired too, weary and heart sore from many things, the inexorable approach of winter being the least of them. And despite all of this, I whispered a dream into her ear to make her horrible ordeal into nothing but a blurred, fading nightmare. And then I spent the rest of the early morning guiding the exhausted search party back to the tree. It was hard. I was staggering on my feet and my magic was almost depleted. I had to work to keep them from seeing me. I became exasperated with them more than once. Well, they found her a little after dawn, still curled up and dreaming where I left her. I think her name was Lashandra. Ah, here we are. Come in, and be welcome. We're in luck. I still have a reserve of plum wine from last year's autumn equinox. What do you mean you don't drink wine this early? <laughs> Silly. Um, let's see. Hazelnuts, uh, figgleheads, quail eggs. Hmm. When I'm not making comely mortals breakfast, I tend to the forest. Make sure that all its needs are met. All sorts of things. Sometimes the Nixies squabble and cause a river to flood. Sometimes an illness will ravage the trees, needle blight or root disease. Once I spent an entire summer banishing an ash borer infestation. By autumn's end, I was dead on my feet. Did you know there's a young giant sleeping underneath the mountains? Sometimes, when it's peaceful, I dream what she's dreaming. Dim, drowsy memories of her father's whiskery kisses atop her head, or being rocked in her mother's arms near the fire. One of my tasks is making sure that nothing rouses her prematurely. <laughs> you needn't worry about when she's due to wake up. Both you and I will be dust long before that happens. Um, there. Scrambled eggs with fiddleheads. A bowl of nuts, and these tubers fried up nicely, and rosehip tea. I use the last of the honey. Here you are. Please enjoy the hospitality of my house. Hmm. Thank you. I'm glad you like them. Would that I had a nice cheese to go with it, or at least some decent meat. But I uh, ate the last of the dried pork yesterday and haven't had the time for hunting or fishing. Mm. It's a shame that blackberries aren't in season yet. Or peaches. I used to be rather good at baking before accepting my role as the forest's heart. I'd make these hand pies. <laughs> they were pure comfort. 
peaches, blackberries, cream, and a dash of toasted sugar over the top. It didn't matter what the occasion was, if it was someone's name day, or I was consoling friends in the wake of some tragedy, or <laughs> if poor Danielle was at the healers again with a collapsed lung. Oh, gods, don't ask, it's a long story. Out came those hand pies. They were my secret weapon. I suppose there's nothing stopping me from asking for luxuries like flour and milk. I'm sure my family would be happy to provide. The sad truth of it is, I simply don't have much time for baking these days, especially now that spring is here. And I haven't made them in decades. I wonder if I still remember how. <laughs> You finished that quickly? You must have been hungry. It was that good? Are you trying to make me blush? <laughs> there aren't many things that can, you know. You were planning to eat what as you walked? Ramen? What's ramen? <laughs> Great hells, it looks like a roof shingle. That's the only thing you've had to eat all week. Nothing but your piddling human doodles. Stop giggling. This is serious. Were you even going to cook it? No. God's above and below. Would you like seconds? Are you sure you don't want any wine? Very well. Me? Oh, but I did have my breakfast. Why, when you had yours, of course. <laughs> yes, <laughs> just from watching you. Don't you know? I can enjoy food, but it doesn't nourish me. What feeds us, replenishes us, is revelry. We need it, the way goblins need chaos or elves need starlight. I could eat a hundred hand pies and feel, well, full, sluggish, but not fed. <sighs> You've made breakfast a special occasion, and so I am revived. Had you not shown up, I would have gotten by. It's been difficult with everyone away. Mayhap I would have packed a snack and some wine, took up my reed pipes and let my feet take me where they wanted. <sighs> yes... It is hard making merry by yourself, but not impossible. Either way, thank you for joining me. It's been quite some time since I've had the chance to talk so much at once to, well, anyone. Something about you brings it out in me. Your presence is heartening. Because we satyrs aren't meant for solitary lives. It's not in our nature. We need people around us, wine and dancing and song, contests, stories, holidays. But when my predecessor met her end, someone needed to take her place, or the entire forest and all its creatures would die. Do you know what happens when a sleeping giant rots beneath the ground? I hope you never live to find out. <clears throat> I was the only one hale enough to do so, and so I took up my duty. The forest's first satyr. Oh, it's not as bad as it seems. My family visits when they can, and, of course, I have my mortals. Oh, it pains me to know of their suffering. Your lives are so brief already. It's a travesty to us watching your lives shorten even more especially by something so devastating. I've lived through floods, plagues, all sorts of calamities, and it never gets easier watching humanity struggle. And you. When I found you, you looked so, so tired, like you had the weight of the whole world on your back. I can't imagine how hard it's been. Measures in place, are there? Hmm. What might they be? <laughs> Even your young ones are cooped up inside. 
That sounds like a sure path to madness, if ever there was one. Is this the first time you've wandered in three months? My dear, tell me more. Gotta be good. Six feet apart while wearing masks. How do you do it? How do you hold yourself apart from everyone? It's no wonder you shied away from me like a spooked deer. To go for so long without seeing a friendly face or feeling a hand clasped in yours. <laughs> Unimaginable. <laughs> I punch the bread dough to feel something. <laughs> that you can joke about this is... Oh, dear one. Don't weep. Please don't weep. Breathe, dear. Settle down. Take deep breaths. That's it. You're all right. I have you now. I promise you may stay here in my arms as long as you like, but let's sit down. You look well on your way to turning into a wraith. When did you sleep last? It's a little wonder with so much on your mind. Come here. Rest your head. There. Is that more comfortable? Hmm. I apologize. I should have chosen my words more wisely before. Well, when I said that it's difficult to watch you struggle, I didn't mean to make it sound as though the situation were hopeless. If anything, it's the exact opposite. Every time you mortals weather the foulest, bleakest adversity, and every time you surprise us, You're too young to have to worry about such things. Not even past your ninetieth year. Take heart. There's life in the world yet. One day this will pass. It always, always does. And when it does, we'll rejoice with you. Mm, I know. You've every right to be tired. You can sleep here. Like this, if you like. I don't mind. My morning tasks can wait for a few hours. <sighs> oh, perhaps I'll doze off with you. <clears throat> it's hard to let go, isn't it? The thoughts swirling in your head. Sometimes playing my pipes helps when I'm wakeful, but uh, they're out of reach at the moment, and I find myself rather reluctant to move. Perhaps I'll hum it. Not as pretty a sound, but... <laughs> Very well, if you insist. It's been said my voice runs deeper than even that of the great whale god Euthamus, but if you enjoy it, Dear one, darling, sunshine, sweetheart, <laughs> little mortal, I, I need to answer nature's call. Uh, thank you. You rest well. I'd say it's nearly noon. You must have really needed it. 
I should see to my duties. Would you like to come with me? The path I take will bring us near the forest's entrance, so you can make your way home then if you wish. Some sun and fresh air would probably do you good. <sighs> I was hoping you'd say yes. I'll be but a moment, I just need to gather a few things. <sighs> there, you look better already. Sunlight suits you. First, we visit the willow, under which our ghosts congregate. Oh, you didn't think this forest had any dead? All of them do, dear heart. It's just over here. Hmm. Why have you stopped? It's all right. Come here. Under the branches. You're not trespassing any more than I am. <laughs> Take my hand. It's fine. I promise. I've never known them to show even an ounce of rancor towards anyone. I honestly know very little else about our ghosts. I'm not sure why they favor this particular tree. I don't know their stories. They can't speak to me, or perhaps they can, and I just can't hear them. Ah, but it never hurts to pay respects. They can't drink the wine or even pick up the bowl that contains it, but they can remember wine, should they wish to. It's the same for candles. They can't so much as stir its flame, but that doesn't mean they don't miss its warmth. And, uh, <laughs> I told a little fib earlier when I said I'd gave you the last of the honey. There's still this little jar left. I didn't think you'd want ghost offerings flavoring your tea. Um, there, that should do it. Tell me, what do you do when you're not brightening my afternoon with your company? How do you spend your days? Oh, you write. Well, then it's a good thing you got outside. I've seen what happens to creatives when they shut themselves away for too long. Well, they weren't writing any epics. Let's leave it at that. Promise me you'll remember to greet the sky every once in a while, hmm? It's a shame I never learned your language. It still feels so new to me. Reading your work would be a treat if I could. Oh, no. You're not hearing me in your language because I speak it. Satyrs have a gift of tongues, but that doesn't mean we're fluent in all of them. You want me to understand your words, and so I do. It works the other way around as well. This whole time, I've been hearing you in the language of my birth. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on the written word. I can read and write in more than a few languages, but I haven't gotten around to perusing yours yet. <laughs> You're right. Mayhap it's high time I learned. What's next? Hmm. So much of it is simply making sure everything still thrives. So far, nothing feels out of place. The rivers are usually content as long as they are clean and unobstructed. Many of the trees are still stirring. They won't be fully awake for at least another month, maybe more. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I can't believe it. Come see. <sighs> We're in luck. Do you see that bud barely peeking out of the deer ferns? Look closer. See the glow. <sighs> this will eventually grow into a dryad. She's germinated early. Hello, little sister. Oh, what a wonder. 
I'm so happy I get to show that to you. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I could show you my forest. <laughs> you sweet thing. You've been so alone, haven't you? Three months without so much as a hug. Feeling too unsafe to even show your face to anyone else. If I'm truthful, I could also be describing myself with those words. It's been so long since... Since I... Gods, I'm so glad I found you. You looked so desolate. I couldn't help but want to give you comfort, and then you listened to me go on about my troubles. You were kind. Ow. <laughs> what the? Ah, <laughs> uh, acorns. <laughs> I think we are being told to seek our solace elsewhere. Come on, let's go where no eyes can find us.